Hello, my name is Ryan Meyer, and I am a research engineer in the Commercial Buildings Group at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL, in Golden, Colorado. It is my pleasure to welcome you, as well as thank you for your interest in participating in this year's Jump Into STEM competition. Now, before we begin, I have just a few reminders. First, this presentation is pre-recorded, enabling both students and professors to revisit at any time. Also, there's a copy of these slides available on the jumpintostem.org website. Simply navigate to the current challenges, and then within each challenge, select the link to additional challenge resources. This will provide a PDF download of the slides we will view today. And lastly, the jumpintostem.org website contains all other relevant information pertaining to submissions, submission requirements, evaluation criteria, and many other helpful resources. Jump Into STEM seeks to inspire the next generation of building scientists by developing challenges that are relevant to today's top research questions. The challenge topics are quite broad, as you will see, but this is meant to encourage and enable students to focus and provide a unique solution to a specific area of interest within the broader challenge scope. Many of us likely view the building construction process as tried and true. And why shouldn't we? An industry spending nearly $1 trillion per year in the US alone for new construction and employing over 7 million workers must be doing something right. But for today, let's put our knowledge and perhaps predispositions aside and assume we are not limited by the methods and processes in place today. What could we do differently? In general, the building construction industry has remained relatively unchanged. Certainly our materials, our techniques, they have evolved throughout our history. We've even named our historical time periods after some of these materials. Think of the Stone Age or the Bronze Age. However, the fundamental practice of hauling materials to the construction site, where they are then assembled, has remained our go-to method. Now let's acknowledge that this go-to method has certainly proven itself effective. And we've sought and found ways over the years to improve various parts. Yet at the same time, we know that there are inevitably limitations to this practice. For example, think of the structural framing techniques typical of wall systems we find in our homes today. These techniques actually limit the potential effectiveness of the insulation and ultimately energy efficiency of these structures. Those studs, whether wood or metal, they are effectively breaks in the thermal barrier. And this is just a very simplified example. There are many other important benefits, including air quality or occupant comfort and more, that are also limited due to today's traditional construction methods. Now I mentioned that Jump Into STEM focuses on challenges that are relevant to top research topics today. The Department of Energy currently has an ongoing advanced building construction initiative, which is focused on investing in innovative technologies and engaging with diverse building industry stakeholders, looking to create market viable solutions to this challenge. Some of the technology investments that DOE has made to date are listed here. 
And I would certainly encourage everyone to visit DOE's Advanced Building Construction Initiative webpage to learn more and potentially find inspiration. A few of these technologies will actually be discussed in subsequent slides. Now, building construction industry specific initiatives need not be the only path for innovative ideas. Take, for example, the automotive and airline industries. Over the last century, these industries have developed and invested in automation systems that reduce costs, but at the same time improve quality. More recently, the use of advanced materials such as carbon composites is drastically reducing the weight of airplanes. This enables them to fly farther on less fuel. This enables more flight offerings to customers while still keeping costs down and reducing impact to the environment at the same time. Now, most importantly, these are not the only examples, nor the only industries where such innovation is prevalent. Perhaps the building construction industry can learn from such pioneers. Perhaps there are new innovations in construction practices, design methods, or even materials that can drastically change how buildings are built. Before setting you free, there are a number of recent developments that we want to bring to your attention. These serve simply as synopses of existing efforts to provide both background, but more import importantly, spark potential ideas. There are additional resources for all of these available at the end of the slides. The construction industry has seen a number of companies recently modularizing their processes. Now, what does this mean? This means they build portions of buildings, which are typically walls, but in some cases, whole apartments, in a factory style assembly line, which has a number of benefits. These companies have improved worker safety through improved working conditions. They've reduced construction cost through bulk purchasing of materials, but also not dealing with typical on-site construction delays, the most common being weather. Improvements to energy efficiency have also been realized, primarily where improved working conditions and automation have improved the precision of fabrication. Other unique and novel solutions to materials and methods include 3D printing. Although a nascent practice when it comes to building construction, continued innovation in materials and processes could vastly change the prospect of more widespread and scaled industry use. All of us are currently living through his, a, a historical event. The COVID-19 pandemic has arguably forever changed our thinking and approach to many facets of human life. More specifically, the pandemic has changed how we think about our buildings. For example, buildings are most often designed and constructed, constructed excuse me, for a single use or purpose. Think of an office building or hospital as an easy example. This includes the design and the embedding of all infrastructure in walls or in ceiling cavities. This predefines typical proportions of spaces. This leads to customized HVAC systems designed for one purpose for their entire use. Is there something we could do differently to address the need for our buildings to be more flexible or perhaps more resilient to events where typical use is no longer the priority? Along similar lines, when natural disasters strike, the Federal Emergency Management 
Agency, or FEMA, will typically deliver temporary housing in the form of trailers that are hauled where they are needed, and then they are stored when they are not. Is this the best approach? Good design, construction, or even materials help rethink deployment and deconstruction efforts while still maintaining durability and perhaps improving energy efficiency. Or what about how buildings and materials fit into the larger emerging, emerging concept of a circular economy? We have traditionally designed and built buildings for a single purpose with a usable lifetime, after which they may be renovated or even demolished for something new. This process does not align with the concepts of a circular economy, where we instead focus on keeping resources in use, where we find ways to extract their maximum value, and then we ensure they can be recovered and regenerated and not just thrown away. This year's Jump into STEM Advanced Building Construction Methods Challenge is seeking innovative solutions that incorporate substantial changes in building materials or construction methods that lead to significant benefits. Such benefits include, but are certainly not limited to, increased occupant health, comfort, or productivity, reduced construction time, cost, or even waste, improvements to the potential for energy efficiency, and even considering building flexibility. As promised, the following two slides contain links to suggested additional resources pertaining to all topics discussed during this presentation. As mentioned at the beginning, please refer to the jumpintostem.org website for all challenge-related information. We hope that this quick synopsis has been helpful at introducing this broad challenge topic, but more importantly, has generated and sparked interest in potential innovative solutions for the future of the building's science industry. Thank you, and good luck to all.